So I've heard a rumor that you are interested in checking out Linode and getting started on the platform. Maybe you haven't even created your very own Linode just yet, or maybe you have and you want to find out how to get connected. In this video, I'm going to walk you guys through creating your very own Linode instance, and then I'll walk you through using SSH to connect to it so you can go ahead and get started. And I'm going to show you the process of using SSH on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux as well. So let's go ahead and get started. And now I'm going to show you the process of setting up Windows 10 to connect to your Linode via SSH. So we'll just open a new tab here. We will search for PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. And this first link right here is the appropriate one. I'm going to click on that and just verify that the URL that you're downloading this from actually matches what I have up here at the top of the screen. And then we can click on the download it here link that we see. You can download the 64-bit installer. It's a small file, so it should download very quickly. Let's open that up. Just navigate through this little installation wizard here. We'll install it. And we'll click finish. By default, a readme file will appear on the screen. And now we should be good to go. PuTTY should be installed. So if we search our applications for PuTTY, we see that right here. And what we're going to do for the host name or IP address, we're going to paste in the IP address. But before we do that, let's type root and then the at symbol. Access the dashboard, which we can get to very easily by going to cloud.linode.com. Then we can click on the Linode. We should see the IP address right here. And then we will click on this little clipboard icon to copy it to our clipboard. And then we can paste it in. And as you see here, I've pasted in the IP address. That should be actually all we need to do. So I'll click open. I'll say yes. And the password for this is again, the Linode password that we set during the creation of the Linode itself. I'll go ahead and press enter. So now we actually have an SSH connection to the Linode and we can get started and build it out to be something awesome. On Mac OS, it's actually very easy to get started and connect to your Linode because most of what you need is actually already on your computer. So what you'll do is open up Launchpad, then where it says Other, we'll click on that, and you should see Terminal among the applications in that category. So if we click on that, then the terminal app will appear and we can use that to go ahead and SSH into our Linode. So I'll make the font size a bit bigger here. And then to connect to the Linode, just like with any other SSH client, we can do SSH, the username, which in our case is root, and then the IP address of our Linode. And then press enter. And we'll type in the password that we set up when we initially created the Linode. And now we are connected to our Linode and we can get started in getting it set up. Now, if you are using Linux on your desktop or laptop, it's even easier to get started because almost every desktop distribution of Linux has a terminal app already installed. So what you need to do is go ahead and access your applications menu. And that varies depending on which desktop environment you are using. In my case, I can click on activities and then the applications menu is right here. If I click on that and then scroll down, I have a terminal icon right here. I also have it on the tray here on the left. And if you don't know where your terminal app is on your desktop Linux distribution, you can usually find it by pressing the super key, which is basically the Windows key, and then start typing terminal, and then you should find it. But anyway, you go ahead and click on terminal. Go ahead and make that full screen. I'll increase the font size a bit here. And now to connect to our Linode, we could simply do SSH, which defaults to root, at, and then the IP address, and then enter. I'll say yes to the initial confirmation here, and then the password, which is the one that we set up when we initially created the Linode. And now we are connected to our Linode and we're ready to go. Once you use SSH to connect to your Linode, regardless of the means that you use to facilitate that connection, 
you can go ahead and get started and set it up for whatever your use case happens to be. Now, this Linode is actually accessible from anywhere in the world. It's accessible from the public internet. Now, what I'm going to do is demonstrate that right now and install a default web server to show you just how powerful that actually is. So first of all, on Debian and Ubuntu, we can run this command right here, apt update to synchronize the repository index. I'll press enter. Should happen pretty quickly. And then we can run apt install Apache 2. That's also specific to Debian and Ubuntu in the documentation. There are alternative commands for this, but I'll press enter. It should be good to go. So now what we can do is open up a web browser and then paste in the IP address of our Linode and press enter. And as you see here, we actually have a default web page and you can access this default web page from any computer in the world that has public internet access because your Linode is globally available on the internet. And what you can do from here is replace this default web page with your blog, your company's website, or whatever it is you want to host on your Linode, and it'll be available for other people to access all around the world. But before we go crazy and customize our Linode, there is one very important thing that we want to take care of. Since this is publicly available, we want to make sure that all of the patches and updates are installed. Now I'm going to run through the process on Debian and Ubuntu. This command is the same for both. And if you haven't already run it, you'll need to run apt update. Again, that synchronizes the package repository index. And as you see here, I have 106 packages that can be upgraded. So what I'm going to do is run apt dist upgrade just like that and press enter to install all of the available updates. And here we get a preview of all of the package names that it wants to install. I'll just press enter. And that will install all the available updates. So now all the updates are installed. And in order to take advantage of those updates, we do need to reboot the server. But before we do that, there's a few other things that we should go ahead and take care of. And the next thing that I recommend we do is set the host name. Now for the majority of the distributions that are being offered, especially those that use systemd, we have a very specific command that we can use to set the host name. So hostname CTL, and then set hyphen hostname, and then whatever you want to name your Linode. So example.com, as you see here, if yours is hosting a website, but as you saw in the beginning of the video, I called mine web server. So I'll press enter. And then to verify everything is correct, we can run hostname by itself. We can see that the hostname is now web server. Now on the command prompt, you can actually see the name of localhost. But as soon as we reboot the server, then that'll go ahead and be updated. Next, we can go ahead and update the host file. So to do that, it's nano, and then slash etsy, host, just like that, to open that file in a text editor. And then what we will do is add two new lines. So we can go ahead and grab the IP address of the Linode. I'm going to paste it right here, and then I'll give it the same name. And if yours is going to be a website or have DNS, then of course you want to go ahead and include your fully qualified domain name as well as just the host name in that format right there. But on my end, I'm going to just use the simplified form and then we can grab the IPv6 address, which is right here, also on the dashboard. And you guessed it, I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to do the same thing, include the same name. Then I can hold Control and press O to bring up the save dialog. I'll press Enter to save the file. And then I can exit the editor with Control X. And then next we can set the time zone for our Linode. And to do that, we first have to know which time zones are actually available to us. And to do that, we can use time date CTL with the option list hyphen time zones, just like that, press Enter. And we can get quite a few here, so we can actually use the down arrow as well as the up arrow to scroll through the list and find whatever time zone closely matches to where we are geographically. Now, in my case, it's actually America slash Detroit as we see here. So what you're doing is just finding which time zones are available 
And then you can write down the format that applies to where you are. So I'll do Q to quit out of here. And now that we were able to list all the time zones and then choose the one that we want, we can go ahead and set the time zone. And again, for that, we will use time date CTL and then set hyphen time zone. And then in quotes, whatever the time zone is that we want to set the system to. And then in my case, America slash Detroit. But you'll put whatever yours is in double quotes and then press enter. And then you can enter the date command to see if the time actually matches where you are geographically. And in my case, it does. So there you go. At this point, you should have your very own Linode instance, and you should also know how to connect to it as well. So what are you going to create with your Linode? I'm sure it's going to be awesome. And speaking of awesome, definitely check out the other features in the cloud dashboard. There's all kinds of fun and awesome things that you can do with your Linode account. And I'm excited to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching.